Okay, this is the next part in section 2.2, which will we'll cover um, example 3. So again, we want to separate the variables and apply it. This one also has an initial condition. So after I find my answer, I still have to go back and um, do an extra step. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve um, this particular problem. Now this one is going to be a lot to work with but then I've got to remember at the end to use my initial problem which means I am not allowed to leave my answer with just C's in them I have to find those C values okay so this is a very long problem and it may take me more than one page um, so let me get an extra sheet prepared just in case so I can separate the variables just as I did um, in the previous example okay so what we want to do is we want to get rid of the fraction parts by um, maybe cross multiplying. So if I cross multiply, I will get um, x squared minus 1 times dy. And on the right hand side, I'll get y squared minus 1 dx. But the variables are on the wrong side where the dx and the dy are. So I can divide both sides by both of those um, factors. So if I divide by x squared minus 1 and y squared minus 1 on both sides, these will cancel here, these will cancel there, and I'll get dy over y squared minus 1. Here I'll get dx over x squared minus 1. And then if I rewrite, let's integral. I'm going to integrate both sides, right? But then I'm also going to separate them as fractions. So I'm going to say the integral of 1 over y squared minus 1 dy and the integral of 1 over x squared minus 1 dx. Now you cannot take the ln here because if I use the denominator as u squared here, um, Let's just make a note. If I were to say u equals y squared minus 1, when I go to find du, that would be 2y dy. And you can't just put a variable in. You can play around with constants and coefficients, but you can't just throw a y in there. It's going to throw everything off. Okay? So we can't use u substitution for this particular problem. However, if you go way back into your Cal 2 techniques, we had something where we could put this into linear factors, um, and if we did that, then we could apply the natural laws, okay? And that technique was actually partial fraction decomposition. And I know that's a lot to remember, um, but we've got to recall it, and we've got to use it here. So I'm going to go off to the side in a red ink and um, do the partial fraction decomposition. Now, I notice that these are the same kind of expressions, just different variables. So I'm going to use a general variable when I do this side work here. So I'm going to say, let's say I have u squared minus 1. Not an x or a y, just a general u. And then I can apply this whole thing to both of them. So I'm going to say a, actually I'm going to factor this first. I get u plus 1 and u minus 1. And so I can separate that into a over u plus 1 plus b over u minus 1. And then I can use this to do the partial fraction decomposition. So if I multiply all three terms by the common denominator, the common denominator will cancel here and I'll be left with 1. This part of the common denominator will be canceled, and I'll be left with a times u minus 1. This part of the common denominator will be canceled, and I'll be left with b times u plus 1. And so then if I distribute, I get a times u minus a plus b times u plus b. And if I set up my um, coefficient system of equations, there are no u's on this side. So I will get 0 for the coefficient of u equal to a plus b, which are the coefficients of u on the right-hand side. 
On the left hand side I have this as a constant and then I have this as a constant and this as a constant. So minus a plus b. And now I like to use the substitution method when I'm solving these. So these are already the same number in front with opposite signs. So I'm just going to add them together. 0 plus 1 is 1, a minus a cancel, and b plus b is 2b. If I divide both sides by 2, I get that b equals 1 half. If I go back in and plug this into the top equation, or the bottom, doesn't matter, I can solve this. So a plus 1 half, if I minus 1 half on both sides, I would get that negative 1 half equals a. Which means this fraction here breaks up into negative 1 half over u plus 1 plus positive 1 half over u minus 1. So I'm going to use this partial fraction decomposition to rewrite both of these um, integrands. Okay? So on the left hand side, I'm going to have negative 1 half y plus 1 plus 1 half over y minus 1 dy. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have negative 1 half x plus 1 plus 1 half x minus 1 dx. Now I can pull the, neg the 1 halves out. I can do a lot of manipulation here, um, but I'm going to separate so that I have two integrals for two different terms, two integrals from two different terms, and I'm going to factor out the numerators. So this is going to become negative 1 half 1 over y plus 1 dy. This is going to become positive 1 half integral of 1 over y minus 1 dy. This is going to become negative 1 half 1 over x plus 1 dx. And this is going to become positive 1, ha 1 half integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. Now I have the u parts. If u is y plus 1, then du would be 1 dy. So I already have everything I need. I'm going to say this is 1 half the ln of the absolute value of y plus 1 plus 1 half ln absolute value of y minus 1, negative 1 half, oh, I forgot my plus c, plus c1, ln of the absolute value of x plus 1, plus 1 half ln of x minus 1, and then plus c2. Okay, now we've got to go through all of that manipulation like we did before to solve for y. First thing I'm going to do is multiply every single fraction by um, a negative 2, actually, so that I can get these guys to be positive because they're in the front. Okay, so I'm going to multiply everybody by negative 2, every term. So here I will get a positive ln of y plus 1, here I'll get a negative ln of y minus 1, here I'll get a negative 2c1, here I'll get a positive ln of x plus 1, a negative ln of x minus 1, and then a negative 2c2. Now I'm going to use my logarithm rules to put the two ln terms together here and the two ln terms together there. So we get the ln of y plus 1 over y minus 1 minus 2c1 ln of x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus 2c2. Then I'm going to move this term over to that side so that I can get closer to getting my y variables by themselves. And then I did run out of space here, so I'm going to continue on to the, another page. Here are the homework set, um, so you'll have those in the video as well. But let's continue. So I need to get the ln of this. I need to get this by itself. So I'm going to say e raised to that exponent, 
and then e raised to this as an exponent, and then um, e raised to, actually it's all of that, it's one side and the other. So minus 2c2 plus 2c1. So it's e raised to all of this, okay? Now I'm going to use the same thing as I did before. So here the ln's are going to cancel and I'm going to get y plus 1 over y minus 1. Here I'm going to separate it, so e to this term times e to this term, right? And then, let's see, where do we go from here? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, these will reduce, so we get y plus 1 over y minus 1, and I forgot to leave the bars in there. Here we'll get x plus 1, x minus 1. And remember, e to anything with a constant is just going to be a constant, okay? Now, in order to take this out of the bars, it's going to be plus or minus, right? And so is this, plus or minus. And we can put the c in front or we can put it in back, it doesn't matter. Now, if I divide by a plus or minus 1 and divide by a plus or minus 1, this can reduce the, the differentiation there with signs, but here it really doesn't matter. If I divide a plus by a plus, I end up with a plus, a negative by the plus. All the combinations will still give me plus or minus. Um, and actually, you can think of it as if they reduce as well. Um, it doesn't matter because the sign is only going to be considered as a C. So in any case, you still end up with this particular um, fraction here. It doesn't matter what the signs are on this C, it's still a C. Now, I cannot solve for Y because I have two variables here. So this is as far as I can go with it as far as solving the DE. So I would say that this is my solution. However, they did give me an initial condition at the very beginning of the problem which I will use to find what exactly is that C. They gave me this condition, which means that when X is 2, Y is 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these in here. When Y is 2, when X is 2. So essentially all the variables become a 2. And so I get 3 equals 3C, which means C equals 1, if I divide both sides by 3, right? Well, if it's 1, then my final answer will be this equation. And again, you can't solve for Y in this particular equation, so you do leave the problem exactly like that, but you no longer have an unknown C, you know that C is equal to 1. Okay, so don't forget the homework for this section is going to be number 1, 2, 7, 11, 17, and 25. So these problems are separable and you will be able to integrate them. Some of them may involve logarithms, some of them may not. This problem will involve partial fraction decomposition. And then this problem may or may not involve partial fraction decomposition. However, it will have an initial condition like this one did. So you do have to find what that C value is, okay? Now this is a lot to practice, so I need you to go in and practice 1.1, 1.2, and 2.2's homework assignments so that we can clear up any confusion or anything that we have uh, misunderstandings for these sections before we move on to 2.3. I will be prepared with the notes for 2.3, but it depends on the class on how far we get, okay? So keep this in mind when you're working on your homework. Don't forget to work on your homework. 
because if you haven't worked on your homework, you're not going to have any questions, and which means I'm just going to keep carrying on. Okay, so make sure you start attempting your homework.